It's been a while since we tackled the landing page concept. A few weeks ago, I shared a video on creating this text over animation using shaders, and I received a few requests to cover this page reveal animation as well. I was pretty impressed with the concept myself, so I decided to give it a shot using GSAP. And just yesterday, I rebuilt this landing page reveal animation using the CSS clip path property and some basic GSAP functions. You can see that the result is pretty solid version that closely mirrors the original website. In today's video, I'll walk you through my approach to implementing this landing page reveal animation concept using HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and some very simple GSAP instances. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit the like button and consider subscribing if you haven't already. And if you are interested in the source code, check out the pro membership via the link in the description. Alright, let's dive into the code. Let's start by setting up the container. First, we'll add a counter. For this, we'll use a simple paragraph element. We'll update its content dynamically using JavaScript later on. Next. Let's create our hero section. Inside the hero section, we'll need a navbar. I'll divide the navbar into two columns. The first column will split into two parts and the second one into three parts, each called nav items. Inside each of these nav items, I'll add some links and placeholder text for now. After that, we move on to the header. We'll use an h1 tag with some text. Later, we'll split this word into individual letters, wrapping each letter in a span using JavaScript utility function so we can animate them individually. Finally, at the bottom, we'll add an image. I'm using an image element with an image I found on Unsplash. That's everything we need for now. Let's move on to the styling. First. We'll reset the margin, padding, and box sizing for all elements to ensure consistency across the layout. Next, we'll set the HTML and body to take up the full width and height of the viewport and apply a custom font. The background color is set to a soft gray and the text color is set to a deep black. For images, we'll make sure they cover their containers by setting their width and height to 100% and using object fit cover. Next, we'll style the paragraph and anchor tags. We are removing the text decoration and setting the font size to 13 pixels, with the text color matching our body color. The container is set to fill the entire viewport, with overflow hidden to prevent any unwanted scroll bars. For the counter, we are centering it on the page using absolute positioning and transform. The clip path is used here so that we can animate the text through it. It sits at a lower Z index to allow the hero section to overlap. Inside the counter, the paragraph is positioned relative and translated slightly to give us some room for animation, hiding it behind the clip path. Moving on to the hero section, we are positioning it in the center of the viewport and scaling it down slightly. Again, we use clip path to create an initial shape that we'll animate later. And the Z index is set higher so it appears above the counter. The overlay is placed on top of the hero section, covering it entirely with a dark background. This is also going to have an initial clip path and we'll animate this clip path to reveal the hero section. For the navigation, it's positioned at the top of the page with Flexbox to manage the layout. The nav columns and nav items are set up to distribute the space evenly with the text in the second column's last item aligned to the right. The header is positioned at the top with a clip path to create a masking effect for the text. The H1 inside the header is styled with a large bold font centered on the page and prepared for animation when we wrap each letter in a span.
For the hero image, we are positioning it at the bottom of the hero section, scaling the image up to create a dramatic effect. Finally, in our media query for smaller screens than 900 pixels, we adjust some of the styles for better responsiveness like hiding the second navigation column and tweaking the positioning of the header and hero image. With all this in place, our landing page is now ready for animations. Now let's bring our landing page to life with some animations using GSAP. First, we register the custom ease plugin and create a custom easing curve called hop. This curve will give our animations a unique easing effect. Next, we need to split the text inside our headers h1 element into individual spans. This allows us to animate each letter separately. To do this, I'll paste a function called split text into spans which we have used in many of our previous videos. This function selects all the elements matching the specified selector, splits the text into characters and wraps each one in a span element. We then call this function on the h1 inside our header. Now let's set up the counter animation. We start by selecting the paragraph element inside our counter using document.querySelector. This is where the counter's value will be displayed. Next, we define a few variables. The counter begins at 0 and we set an update interval of 300 milliseconds which determines how frequently the counter value updates. The animation will run for a maximum of 2 seconds aiming to reach an end value of 100. Inside the update counter function, we calculate the elapsed time by subtracting start time from the current time. As long as the elapsed time is less than max duration, we keep increasing current value by random amount between 5 and 30, ensuring it doesn't exceed the end value. The updated value is then displayed in the counter element. Once the max duration is reached, the counter stops updating. We then use GSAP to animate the counter text out of view by moving it upwards with a smooth easing effect. As this happens, it triggers the reveal of the landing page, which is handled by the reveal landing page function. Now let's move on to the main event, revealing the landing page. We start by animating the hero section. The key property here is the clip path, which initially hides the hero content by setting it to a polygon shape that covers the entire area. We animate this property over 2 seconds, gradually revealing the section from the bottom to the top. As the hero section starts to reveal, we also animate its transform property. We scale it back to its original size and center it on the screen using the translate property. This animation runs slightly longer at 2.25 seconds with a power 3 easing for a smooth natural effect. We delay this animation by 0.25 seconds to synchronize it with the clip path reveal. Next, we handle the overlay which is initially covering the hero section. We animate its clip path to remove the overlay making the hero content fully visible. We also animate the hero image image which starts off scaled up. Over 2.25 seconds we scale it down to its original size adding depth to the visual experience.
Finally, we animate the header text where each letter is wrapped in a span. We bring the letters into view by animating their Y position from off screen to their final position. The letter appears one after the other with a stagger effect using a stagger value of 0.1 seconds between each letter. All these animations are triggered together with the on-start callback of the initial hero animation, ensuring everything happens in sync to create a seamless and engaging landing page reveal. Hope you found the video helpful. See you in the next one.